So I've had the Iron Odom Pro for about two months now, and so much has happened. I've had plenty of time to optimize my settings to work best for me, and I'm very happy with this setup. This is the first time that any gaming handheld has felt this personalized, so I am excited to share my setup as well as revisit the Odom Pro, while talking about how it's held up so far. So let's dive right in. This video is sponsored by Bottom Labs. Look, we all need pants, but it doesn't mean that we should wear ugly ones because you're too lazy to go buy a new pair. Bottom Labs will ship straight to your door with quality pants of your choice. I actually picked these black jeans that not only have buttons like usual, but they also have the strap to tighten these to fit your waist the way that you want it to. So go get yourself some pants. Click on the link in the description and browse for your favorite design. Go for it because we all need pants. And thanks again to Bottom Labs for sponsoring this video. So just like before, the exterior design consists of plastic. This device is very well built and there is very little flex to it. The design has held up nicely and there aren't really any random scratches or nicks on it to mess with the aesthetics at all. It still looks really good. However, it seems like the black model does catch on to finger grease a little bit easily. So I will still have to wipe it down every now and then. However, the screen has been almost lint and dust free, which is awesome. The screen always stays clean and I don't even clean it. I do use the touchscreen enough that I should see more marks on it, but I don't. It's really cool thus far. I really think that the design has held up really nicely, but let's see how it holds up about a year from now when I eventually update this video. And here's another thing. I've definitely broken in the buttons by now and they still feel great. They still feel sturdy and like they quickly press down and the D-pad in particular feels even better now because it feels a little bit more loose. So it's just more pleasant to play with. The analog sticks still feel the same to me. We just have to get used to how they are since it kind of resembles Switch uh, or Joy-Con thumbsticks, but they aren't really quite like it. They're just a little bit wider than that, but I always enjoyed the feel of them. I've grown to like my Odin even more with time, but again, let's see how that statement will age within the year. So this device features a 1920 by 1080 IPS display that still looks really good to me. It gets pretty bright and the colors aren't too saturated. They are a little more natural looking or a little more muted, I suppose. It happens to look very good, though more saturation is never really a bad thing as long as it's in moderation. But I do like it. I haven't felt the need to calibrate the screen, so I am happy with it. However, I do kind of wish that this was an OLED panel because I think that we could have gotten one for the Odin Pro to separate it a little bit better from the regular Odin since for the regular Odin and the Odin Pro, it's really just kind of a spec bump, but, but not even in terms of the CPU, it's mostly just when it comes to RAM. And plus, OLED would just be a better looking display overall. So if there ever is an OLED upgrade, then I would definitely love to give that a go. Now the speakers don't actually sound as good to me as they did at first. They sound a little bit quieter for some reason, but still good enough. I won't bother doing a speaker demonstration because it's not that different from how they were. Because they're not that different from how they were, it's just a minor thing that I've noticed. But I could just be going insane too. Now let's go ahead and remember the specs. This device features a Snapdragon 845 and the Adreno 630 GPU, 256 gigabytes of storage for my unit, 8 gigabytes of RAM, Bluetooth 5.0, Android 10 for its OS, and a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. This is a very powerful device, even for the money, and yes, it is very nicely packed, as it is. So when it comes to the software, I just stick to stock Android on this device because I've never really liked how the Odin launcher looks, so I generally just stick to this. Here you have full Android, so you can customize a lot of things about this device. Honestly, because of those customizations, I would recommend that you stick to Android because it's more flexible. It's less streamlined, sure, than Odin's launcher, but I think that Android is just way better. And as for which launcher I use to manage my games, I actually used a reset launcher because I really like how it looks. It has a fantastic scraper to get your game art, though it won't always work since there are still some games without any art and it will even load gameplay for you, but it's not always guaranteed. Either way, it works for me most for the most part and it just feels like such a cool and modern interface or like a manager for, for managing your games. And you can manage your emulators, ROMs, and Android apps. It's awesome and I always go there first before ever touching the individual emulators since it's just that nice. But I've set this up to have everything on here. 
I really recommend this one. I know that LaunchBox is a another great launcher, but I personally think that the Reset one looks better and it's only $5 on the App Store if I recall, so yeah. Now for the emulators that I use, uh, those are going to be Aether SX2, Redream, Dolphin MMJR2, uh, N64 Plus, FZ, PPSS PP, and DuckStation for the games that I will be emulating today. These are all going to be very good emulators with some getting additional and updates every often. Now, I will talk more in detail about these emulators through each system test and talk about some of the settings that I used. However, first things first, I turned on performance mode on the Odin and never went back because I have noticed improvements in performance. I'd rather have great performance and trade a little bit of battery life for it. Now, this is when we start talking about actual performance and today I will be testing quite a few emulators. Almost everything I said in my last video has changed for me after doing some tweaks. So here we go. Let's start with PlayStation 2 using the Aether SX2 emulator. At first performance was hit or miss for me, like it could emulate some games well and others very poorly, but I haven't had these issues since I adjusted some settings. First I set my Ode into performance mode and I always kept it that way. That makes it so, so that the fan can run much faster or at full speed and lets the CPU run better too as a result. As for the renderer, I use Vulkan since this seems to be the best API for Android in my experience. The texture filter has been set to by linear and that's really all I did here. Now I can run every PlayStation 2 game without any issues at all. Games like Dirge of Cerberus that were completely unplayable before now run very well. Sh Shadow of the Colossus also running beautifully in spite of having to render such a large environment. Obviously my Persona games also run very well here too. It just feels pretty close to having an actual PlayStation 2 in your hands but with some exceptions but I would consider PlayStation 2 to be absolutely playable on this system, and it's great for pretty much any game that you want, as long as you're willing to tweak around. Now, let's get into GameCube. This system was a challenge to emulate before, but not at all now. One of the games that gave me issues was the port of Sonic Adventure 2. Now it runs beautifully. Every GameCube game became much more playable after making some small changes, and I only made broad changes to my emulator. I did not go in and change anything per game specifically. I enabled dual core CPU usage and used the GIT recompiler since it's recommended for ARM CPUs. I also stuck with Vulkan because Dolphin MMJR2 just works much better with it, especially on Android. Lastly, I enabled backend multi-threading and since this emulator can be used for both Wii games and GameCube games, I decided to stick uh, to it for both of these systems. Since it edited me great results here too. So Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, Pokemon XD, Shadow the Hedgehog, and so many more got a significant performance boost from these settings. So now I'm actually really happy with GameCube performance as is. Now last time I did neglect to do Wii games because GameCube games were already running poorly for me, at least some of them were. But this time it's very different and like I said, I kept the same settings from GameCube to Wii. And man, so many games run very smoothly, such as Skyward Sword, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and most importantly, what I would consider to be the most demanding game here, Sonic Colors, actually runs quite well on here. Now, there are going to be some stutters with the game running on at an average of 85% of its actual speed, so there is a little bit of slowdown still, but it's it's still very playable as it is. I was very impressed with how well this device can manage Wii games, which means that the rest of the emulator should be a cakewalk, right? For N64, I'm using the M64 Plus FZ emulator, and all I really did was just stretch the resolution to fit the Odin. I didn't make any performance changes because I didn't find it to be necessary at all. And surprise, surprise, Ocarina of Time runs really well here. Granted, there are some graphical issues that are pretty minor, but they could bother uh, other people still, so that's why I wanted to mention them. Personally, I think that playing Ocarina of Time like this is great, looks super sharp, and it just feels more modern. I'm not someone who likes to play games at 4x3, so I definitely prefer this. Sorry, 
but I think it's great the way it is. For PSP, I use the PPSSPP emulator since I believe it is the obvious choice here. I will talk about the worst case scenario, which is going to be something like God of War, Ghosts of Sparta. I set the API to Vulkan like I did for every other emulator where it was possible and set the resolution to 3x without experiencing many issues, if at all. The game looked really good and I can guarantee that many other PSP games can run easily at a 4x or even higher resolution. So so that's worth noting, the Odin is very powerful. The last emulator that I will be testing here is Redream for Dreamcast, and this is no surprise that it runs as well as it does. Sonic Adventure 2 looks and feels really good to play on the system, and I really just wanted to showcase how it looked here. Performance is near flawless, in my opinion. So since this was requested last time, I will do an Android gaming test, but I don't play mobile games, so this is only for testing. That's why I picked Genshin Impact for this test, and it runs really well. You do have to do some buttons remapping because there isn't controller support built into the mobile version of this game, and I never really figured out how to do this, but I know that it is possible. But performance is really good. For Snapdragon 845, I'd say you will have a very enjoyable experience playing Android games on the Odin, since there isn't much in the Play Store that, that can really push it. So there is also the Super Dock for the Odin, and while it wasn't working for me for some time, now it's working very well. I can plug in my Odin and use a GameCube controller to control the interface and play GameCube slash Wii games that way. But you can also connect an Xbox or PlayStation controller if you want to to it, since you have a bunch of USB ports and this does have Bluetooth support. But the presentation with the dock is awesome, and if you wanted a Switch-like experience but for emulators, then this is a great solution for you. Now, I can have local matches of Melee with two GameCube controllers to make it feel like the good old days. Isn't that nice? Now, in terms of the battery life, I have found that this device is actually quite exceptional. I would say five hours with more usage, and I've been playing a ton of PlayStation 2 games on this, so I have been pushing it quite a bit while still keeping it in performance mode, by the way, at all times. It's quite good. So in conclusion, I love the Odin more now than I did when I first got it. This is a device that requires some setup and it's worth taking the time to set it up and get the settings that work best for you. That's why I wanted to do this video, because I figured that it would be a worthwhile update for my Odin Pro review. So do I still recommend it? Absolutely. Not if you're getting into emulation though, there are plenty of other devices I would recommend for that. But if you're more experienced, then this is the device for you. You will love it because I love it. And that should be enough for you to get it. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. It is always appreciated. Um, now, the Odin, unfortunately, is still in the middle of a campaign. There isn't a retail version to get at the moment. Uh, so no links to that so don't worry about that i still wanted to give a very special thanks to all of the patrons beginning with the tier threes omar thank you so much for all of your support and everybody else the tier twos and the tier ones you guys have been doing a great job so thank you so much and i hope that you've been enjoying the additional content uh well not additional but the early content and the other perks that come with being a patron and also, please make sure to follow me on Twitch, where I've been streaming on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And on Instagram, I do post over there every now and then, so I would appreciate a follow over there, too. Now, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. It's blazing hot in here in this garage, and until next time, enjoy.